It was the movie made for him. A film to capture Kim. A face-melting, pants-soiling sales tool for freedom, which Mr. Trump played for the North Korean leader. Roll it. Destiny Pictures presents a story of opportunity. A new story. A new beginning. One of peace. Two men. Two leaders. One destiny. A story about a special moment in time when a man is presented with one chance that may never be repeated. What will he choose? To show vision and leadership? Or not? A new world can begin today. One of friendship, respect, and goodwill. Be part of that world where the doors of opportunity are ready to be open. Where do I sign up? <laughs> so here's a question. Why? Why the movie? Who would do that? It's crazy. Well, actually, it's not. The film shows a tyrant what could be if he stops being a dick. <laughs> it was mocked. It's like a child's presentation to another child to try to convince him to come to the party. There were reporters in the room who initially thought it might have been something that the North Korean government had put together. It was strange, and I think the power of a propaganda video like that is extremely uh, overrated. What idiots! Look, if you live in America with an iPhone, iPad, iVibrator, that video wasn't for you. It was for the North Koreans. Jesus, do you jackasses look at an ad for baby food and say, hmm, that commercial's so stupid, I'm not a baby. <laughs> Hey, what is this bus stop doing in front of my house? I don't need a bus. I live here. <laughs> Let me say this slowly. The video is not for you. It's an intervention made to persuade to show other options besides annihilation. Isn't that why you showed it to me, Donald? Because that's the future. I showed it to you because that's the future. I mean, that could very well be the future. And the other alternative is just not a very good alternative. <laughs> yeah, it's not very good. It's this or die. <laughs> that's not appeasement, that's salesmanship, which is Trump's tool. He gets you into the car. See, once the dealer gets you to test drive the Corvette, you're stuck with two options. In the Corvette, not in the Corvette. A, a life of shiny fun versus a Prius that stinks of Taco Bell wrappers. <laughs> That video let Kim test drive prosperity. Now, it may fail, but critics, what do you have besides mockery? You're just mad because Trump did it first. He began with the threat of nukes, added the sanctions, then the persuasion. He swung the stick, then came the carrot. It's so odd. Wasn't the left the peace party and the right were supposed to be the war pigs? Obama was supposed to bring world peace, not Trump. My God, now we have an orange Gandhi. No, no wonder the left's a mess. Trump just stole the liberal playbook and beat him over the head with it. Now, you think the left would embrace this, but not if Trump's behind it. And then they tell us, all of us, to be skeptical. The left is the least skeptical bunch on earth. These are the same people who blindly embrace bogus climate statistics, communism, gun control lies, new age medicine, quack diets, and any postmodern dreck about race or gender. The same people who demand skepticism would applaud a 60-year-old man self-identifying as a hairless cat. <laughs> that was a shout out to Brian Stelter. Now, a cheap shot. For those of you who still say the summit gave Kim a photo op, this is North Korea. If Kim wants a photo op, he can create one. You think he doesn't have Photoshop back in his castle? <laughs> Fact is, if the summit's a concession, then your solution ultimately is war, because that's all you have without dialogue. Boy, I'm beginning to sound like a liberal. <laughs> Here's Trump on his methods. You have spoken so passionately about the circumstances that led to Otto Warmbier's death. Yeah. In the same breath, you're defending now Kim Jong-un's human rights records. How can you do that? You know why? 
because I don't want to see a nuclear weapon destroy you and your family. Well, okay? and by the way, you I don't want to see, excuse me, because I don't want to see a nuclear weapon destroy you and your family. I want to have a good relationship with North Korea. I want to have a good relationship with many other countries. And what I've done, if you remember, if you're fair, which most of you aren't, but if you're fair, when I came in, people thought we were probably going to war with North Korea. But if I we did, quiet, is it quiet, over? quiet. <laughs> Quiet! I love it when he shushes them. The hand gestures. They're like kids at the ice cream truck, and he's the good humor man. You shut up! I'll get to you next! But they don't even listen to his answers. Here's my second favorite part. Go ahead. What did, you mean, what did you mean just now when you said you wished Americans would sit up at attention when you started? I'm kidding. You don't understand sarcasm. Mr. President, Mr. President, Mr. President, Mr. President, Mr. President, who are you with? No. You with CNN? Wait, hey, Mr. you Mr. are the worst. Wait. It never gets old. It never gets old. He's preventing war and they're chasing jokes. But maybe I could be wrong. Maybe this whole thing is about something else. North Korea borders South Korea, North Korea borders China. What is the third country with which North Korea has a border? North Korea has a tiny little sniglet of a border with a third country there. If you take that train across that bridge from North Korea and they let you cross that border, where you end up in is Russia. Russia! That's the ticket. It's always the ticket. Not averting nuclear war. Crazy. Anyway, I'm optimistic. Here's why. Compare our team, Pompeo, Bolton, Trump, to the previous squad, Hillary, Kerry, Ben Rhodes. Our team, the Three Musketeers, theirs, Three Stooges. <laughs> the Dems, the Dems, you could do better with three quarters of the view. They're a combination of weak handshakes and bad sandals. They stink of scented candles and failure. Ben Rhodes, he's like someone glued 100 be Beanie Babies together. <laughs> Hillary, she couldn't blow her nose without a consultant. John Kerry, he's so wooden, termites consider him an all-you-can-eat buffet. So I'm relieved. Peace is more attractive than war. Yet some on the left, they want to feel worse. If only there was a drug for that. First tonight's headlines, President Trump says there is no longer a nuclear threat from North Korea. <sighs> I miss the fear. What now? The fear of imminent nuclear war. Do you remember when everyone was telling us our lives were in danger? It kind of gave me a rush. That's pretty f***ed up, dude. Are you bummed out because you can't be afraid anymore? You know I am. I think I was feeding off the paranoia. Then you need Catastrophe Fix. Never heard of it. Will it make America afraid again? No, just you, sourpuss. Catastrophics is an aggressive stimulant that works by reactivating your brain's fear receptors, giving you that fight or flight hysteria you crave. Use it on the go. Ah, I don't feel it working yet. Hey, Tom. Ah! Why did you do that? I was just saying hi. No, 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 no. You were sneaking up on me. All right, well, it's great to see you outside again. Ah! We're outside? That's where nuclear war happens. Catastrophics might not be for everyone. Be sure to consult your doctor. Hey, have you seen Tom? Yeah, he's taking shelter again. Tom? You all right in there? It's not gonna be okay. It's not gonna be okay. It's not gonna be okay. Thanks, Catastrophics. The thrill is back with Catastrophics. Side effects may include unhinged partisanship, atypical news interpretation, and difficulty keeping it cool. He's so sharp, you can use his thoughts to carve a pumpkin. Author of Up in the Air and columnist at Harper's Magazine, Walter Kern. She's so bright, glow worms find her intimidating. Her new book is called Hashtag Do Not Disturb. Order it now, author and TV host Jedediah Bila. She's saltier than a Buffalo Highway in January. National Review reporter Kat Tim. And Big Ben is his pocket watch. Former WWE superstar, massive sidekick, Tyrus. Tyrus. <laughs> Walter, this video has never been done before. No one's ever done a sales video, a marketing tool for freedom. It's hilarious to me and wonderful at the same. What do you think? 
Well, it looks like it was produced by Scientologists. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> What it really was was an advertisement for what it would be like to have electricity. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And uh, I noticed there were a lot of subliminal messages that didn't make, they just cut in weird images. Yes. I, so I think it was ultimately a mind control tool that we probably don't have the key to. You yes. Know? Yeah. You know, it's weird. I, after watching it, I wanted to go to North Korea. Exactly. <laughs> I, I wanted to ride a horse across the ocean. Mm -hmm. Did you see that? The little horse going across the ocean? Yep. That made no sense to me. Jedediah, I think this approach is innovative, but it's typical. It's from a salesman. In That's true. That's yeah. absolutely true. And it's funny because he put all the stuff in there that Kim Jong-un likes, like yeah. basketball. And, we, and, <laughs> and he, he basically, it's like he character studied him. And he's a guy who loves American pop culture. He like figured out all the things that he likes. And he said, let me try to put this in here to convince him to be a better man. The only issue I have with it is the fear that it in any way would elevate him. I mean, this is a guy, Kim Jong-un, who, who is a mass murderer. I mean, mm -hmm. he has prison camps in North Korea, yep. um, you know, gross violations of human rights for a citizen. So you don't want him elevated you don't want him to be on par with an American president right. who's far superior. But with that being said, I think that it was very, um, you know, I don't know, like maybe Trump can get a job in advertising after this if the president I see, the thing is, doesn't work out. The thing is, so it's like you have to, what, what Trump is doing is he's looking at this guy as the hostage taker. And in order to get the hostage take, taker to release the hostages, you use everything you have persuasively to get him to put down the gun. And I think what we're seeing is a long process of getting this guy to put down the gun. What do you think, Kat? I watched this whole video without even looking at my phone one time. Wow. <laughs> that hasn't happened since, like, I don't know, 2008. Yeah. <laughs> so I think that it was an interesting video. It was a bizarre video. Mm -hmm. I just don't like how many people are rooting against President Trump actually being able to accomplish, you know, working things out with North Korea because then they would have to be wrong. Mm -hmm. Things not working out with North Korea means war and a lot of dead people. Mm -hmm. I don't like to be wrong, but if me being right means a lot of people are going to die, I actually would err on the side of allowing people to live. <laughs> yeah, that's very nice of you. And apparently that's a very rare thing. It is. It is. Especially a lot in the media, I think, Tyrus. What, do you have any predictions on this? What's your take? Uh, I, was really, I like the basketball stuff. That was great. <laughs> You know what you're doing. I know what you're, doing. Uh, know what you're trying to do. No, I'm, I'm just saying. I just, I'm glad, brothers. We're getting more work. I mean, we're, <laughs> we're everywhere now. I'm on Fox News. We're in North Korea. This is great. Uh, I, th I looked at it a different way. If he showed that video, to his country, mm -hmm. and then Kim doesn't come through, <laughs> he's gonna have a problem. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Because he's done. They've done a very good job of keeping them sheltered and sealed the yeah. original version the videos they showed america we were eating their children right that's true yeah, yeah. and blowing stuff up yeah you had like fangs and stuff so now they're like they get they ride their horses in america <laughs> yeah. just, exactly you even showed like growing food the only thing i was missing was maybe a vegas shot yes or a couple mcdonald's mm -hmm. you know but like he, he's showing them the light yeah you know what's funny, too, for me? Democrats get applauded for this stuff all the time. When they mm -hmm. do stuff that's in line with Hollywood, or remember when President Obama was running, and yeah. every, you know his, his, the stage looked like it was like a scene from a movie, and it was all built up, they get applauded for aligning themselves with, with Hollywood and things like that. But when Trump does something that's a little bit outside of the box to try to convince a tyrant to maybe find a better way, he gets demonized for it. So you have to pick one. Either this is a good idea all the way across, or you have to be you know picking on, on both individuals for doing it. It's just the selection outrage is just always humorous to me. We got to run, but Walter, do you think that, we're, that he's being too deferential, or is this an obvious sales pitch that we all know what he's doing? The big rap on Trump is that he's got such a big ego, everybody yeah. threatens him. But he gave the spotlight to Kim. Exactly, yeah, that's true. You know what that, that uh, Scott Adams says, that he, that he uses ego as almost like a thermostat, that he turns up and down, he lets, him, he lets people take, take control, and then he comes back. It's an interesting, in, interesting development, and I'm cautiously optimistic. I'm also very handsome. <laughs> <laughs>